My name is Sydney Peacock, and this is my module one presentation. The first image I chose depicts a community gathering in front of buildings relevant to the community, such as the school, library, hospital, playground, housing, and a business. In this week's podcast, Dr. Scribner and Ms. Smith spoke of the common misconceptions of school needs. The first inclination when working in an urban school is to assess the food and clothing needs of the students to see if they're met. This was my first thought when assessing a school I may want to work at. I was guilty of not recognizing the student's social, emotional, physical, and academic, academic needs. I was scraping the surface level as opposed to going deeper. When looking at a school, you should look at the after-school programs in the area, libraries, access to Wi-Fi, spaces for the arts, spaces for physical activity, such as fields, local businesses, etc. There's a lack of focus in recognizing the community's assets and becoming an asset to the community. Khalif noted the importance of urban principles becoming an asset to the community. Khalif reinforced this with the case of Joe at UHSS. Joe became an active member of the community by creating opportunities for himself and staff members to engage with community members positively, such as the report card delivery. We fail students when we do not take into consideration how powerful building a relationship with them is. Students and parents can sense if our actions are authentic. They can tell by our actions if we are invested in them. The administration needs to have an asset-based, authentic approach in building a positive school culture that helps contribute positively towards reaching community goals. The second picture is parental involvement. So parental involvement is a topic I found challenging to discuss with my colleagues. I've heard many colleagues state that parents of minoritized students do not care about the students or state that there was, and they state that there is no point in calling home. There's a fear among some of the colleagues to talk to parents who are not proficient in English. There's been growth in providing positive communication instead of primarily negative due to a requirement in my school to record interactions on a school-wide document stating whether or not it was positive, negative, academic, or behavioral. When teachers were confronted with the data demonstrating the communication from staff to parents was primary negative, primarily negative, they began to be more accepting of making positive communication. I believe it is part of the administration's job to help provide professional development to educate teachers on different cultures and help teachers understand their perceptions, microaggressions, privileges, and so on. Lightfoot reiterated the negative impact of the parents don't care narrative and its origin from a misconception of the requirements of parents based on a personal bias. I appreciate this, his metaphor comparing parents to overflowing containers of resources. Again, looking at parents from an asset-based mindset, seeing what they have to offer, seeing their relevance, seeing that they care about their children and it may not look how you grew up or how you envision it looking, but that doesn't make it false. One of the reasons I believe urban schools do not prosper is the belief of what an ideal parent looks like. People do not see them as resources. They see them as challenges. I've heard multiple colleagues state about parent behavior and the negative mindset, calling them helicopter parents, saying they don't care, and so on. I appreciate how Joe, from, his, from the Khalif piece, enforced an inclusion culture through mentoring and confrontation. A question I have had consistently is how to approach teachers who participate in exclusionary practices. I appreciate how the Khalif piece gave an example of what it looks like. I'm afraid I have to disagree with parts of how Joe confronted the teachers in the staff meeting. He could, he could have continued documentation of teacher actions and placed the teachers on a plan, which included the mentorship. If they did not show progress, he should have had an open dialogue with them about the possibility of termination, where he could have stated that some of their actions led towards his observation of racist behavior. While what he did was a powerful statement, I believe it could have been done more skillfully. And overall, professional development needed to be provided for the teachers to help them realize their biases, realize their privileges, and to give them the opportunity to do personal growth to help with their professional growth. The last image was chosen because of the repetition of importance throughout many courses, the, this week's reading and life experiences. It's essential to acknowledge the experience, experiences parents and the community have had with the school as an adult and child. This experience may or may not have been positive and they have the potential to create an automatic resistance to interactions with the school. I once had a parent who blocked the school number because she had such negative interactions and she was tired of having negative phone calls. Experiences can create a barrier that can only be brought down through patience and opportunity to prove reliability, sincerity, integrity, consistency, commitment, and 
competence. That's why I chose the video, the picture, as you can see, it's based on trust, but there are a lot of components needed to build that trust. Both readings and the podcast stated the need to build trust between the community and the school. There are many ways this trust can be built, such as having an open door policy, hosting community events, communicating in many ways, and acting with transparency and authenticity. I think if you go into a school with a vision and a mission, you translate that to the community, you try to support the community in their goals, you reach out to others, you expand for resources and delegate leadership, that you will begin to build that trust. You just need to have the patience, the time, and the understanding of what you're walking into. Thank you.